So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology, Google Pixel 6a for review. Now you can get this in three different colors, sage green you see right here, a chalk, which is their white color, it also comes in charcoal. However, keep in mind, no matter which color you go with, it does have a black aluminum frame, so from the front angle, it's always gonna look the same. Now, I wanna just kinda quickly remind you of the specs if you didn't watch the unboxing video. This does have a 6.1 inch display here. It is an OLED variety, 1080 by 2400 pixels. It does have a dual 12 megapixel plus 12.2 megapixel camera with 2160p or 4K 60p video recording, six gigabytes of RAM on board. This phone also does feature itself a Google Tensor CPU, which is a five nanometer chip that was first featured on the Google Pixel 6 series. In addition to that, it does house itself a 4410 milliamp hour battery. And the Google Pixel 6a does come in at around 449. However, with Google's trade-in values, you can definitely get some deals on this and get it much lower than that. Some people were able to snag this at pre-order about 150. So so what a deal you're getting. I wanna get into the body and the build of this phone. So the phone weighs around 178 grams. So it's not super heavy at all. Actually, it's pretty lightweight. And considering it being a 6.1 inch screen, it's also gonna feel rather compact. However, it does house itself a more rectangular squared kind of feel. So this phone definitely doesn't have, it has more of a sharper corner than say a rounded, you know, Google Pixel 5a, for example. However, I do kind of like it because it reminds me of something like a Galaxy Note or something, or even the more squared Pixel 6 Pro, just kind of in a smaller form factor. Some could say it's more like a Sony kind of looking front, a Sony phone. However, I will say that it, I just kind of enjoyed that display quite a bit or this kind of feel for this size. You don't see a lot of phones this size, you know, with the squared look. Also, I will say this is a 20 by nine aspect ratio. So when you are in, you know, news or something like that, it's a little bit of a more of a narrow display on board here. So this display right here is not quite a wider 19.59 or 16 by nine type of display. This is a little bit more narrow here for this phone. So 20 by nine, that means it's gonna be a little bit more of a better video watching experience, but a little bit more of a cramped reading experience. However, that doesn't mean you can't read nothing. It's just not the widest display out there. Do keep that in mind. This one also comes in at 8.9 millimeters thick with a slight camera bump, very thin. It really doesn't do much on the table. You'll see it doesn't really rock at all. So it's just a very slight dip over the back of the phone, but very thin, not the thinnest phone I've ever seen out there. I didn't feel like I was gonna drop this phone too much. I will say though that the back is kind of slippery and this back is a plastic material, although it would fool you because it kind of feels like glass to be quite honest with you. It looks and feels kind of like glass. So I don't really even care that it doesn't have glass. It's just more durable and it feels pretty similar. So Google did a really good job here as well. So overall, I'd say this phone kind of just emulates the Google Pixel 6 series very well and just brings it down to a more budget line where Google made some cuts to the phone. Okay, so let's further discuss the display. Now, first of all, I just wanna mention, I really like how Google always includes a lot of nice wallpapers on board. They bring the nature swept ones here. You'll see quite a few different ones you can choose from. And of course, with the material UI here with Android 12, you do have the ability to kind of tweak the colors and stuff like that. 6.1 inch OLED, it's an HDR panel on board. It does have a very sharp text. So when you are reading articles and stuff like that, you will find yourself to notice like, wow, this is a very sharp display for the price I paid. I think you're gonna be very happy with that element of the phone. It doesn't look like no cheap, blurry, or even like budget type of display. It really looks good. The only area I will say it's a little bit lacking is the brightness. I find that, you know, this display is bright enough for sure, but I have to crank it up here to really enjoy it to the best of its ability. So I wish Google could get it to where it's a little bit more brighter around halfway because when I crank it up, obviously you're gonna use more battery life on the phone. But overall, it's a very solid panel. In addition, if you go over here in the settings and you scroll down the display on this phone, we scroll down even more, you're gonna find yourself a dark theme, but just like other pixels, you have the adaptive boosted and natural, and they really do change the look. Like if I put it in natural, it looks kind of dulled out or just not as contrasty, and some people really enjoy that, but I pr personally prefer adaptive. That really does give it a more of a punch to the panel. Like I say, the only thing I had an issue with was just having to bring it up. I also am not a major fan of 20 by nine aspect ratios. I like a little bit of a wider display. 
However, I think considering this is the budget phone and a lot of people are going to buy it, it's actually kind of good in a way. So I'm not trying to contradict myself. I'm just saying it's got its pros and cons. It's not my favorite for reading, but it's also really good for that compact feel that fits in the hand. And if a lot of people are buying it, it's going to fit in more people's hand at the 20 by 9 aspect ratio. Overall, I will say just a very strong panel for the price point. I think Google knocked this one out of the park. They really gave you a good panel for what you're paying, but you can still really enjoy video quite well. You could pinch in. I don't know why this video is not pinching in, but you can definitely do that. And you can see we do have ourselves a little bit of a camera cut out here. It doesn't really get in the way too much of content and stuff like that, but you can also use your little picture in picture mode on YouTube and there's enough space to do that. And it does have 60 Hertz, which is one of the things people probably want to know. What did I think about it? I kind of forgot about it, honestly, when I was reviewing it, it's pretty smooth panel overall. You know, it's not no 120 Hertz, but I kind of forgot about it. I think Google could include it as another reason to buy the next a series phone, like a 90 Hertz or a 120 Hertz panel. But honestly, this is not something I would say is a deal breaker for this phone. It's really still a good value of a, a phone right here. Probably the best Android value out there right now. So display is very acceptable. It's a little bit beyond acceptable. Actually, it's almost flagship grade panel in my opinion. A couple of other things I want to mention. There is an always on display right here. So you can see that does come to this phone as well. Not even the thousand dollar iPhone has that right now. Probably will be unveiled with the 14 series, but not quite yet. So that's a pretty nice touch. In addition, there is a one handed mode. So even though this is not the largest one out there, Google is still providing you a way if it's too big for you to drop that screen down and get into, you know, whatever you're trying to do with a one handed mode. So those are a couple things I forgot to mention. I just want to quickly brush on storage as well. This is only available in a 128 gig storage capacity. So if you're the type of person who doesn't really use a lot of Google photos and stuff like that, and you like to keep everything stored locally on your device. You have to make sure this is going to be enough space for you because there's no larger option. Personally, I think it's a good sweet spot. It's higher than 64 gigs, not quite as high as 256, which would jack the price up. So it's a pretty good sweet spot. I think it's not too bad. Now, I want to mention software here because you're essentially this is where it really shines. You're essentially getting the same experience someone would get on a several hundred dollars higher Pixel 6 Pro. And why is that important? Because you're paying several hundred dollars less and you're getting the experience that people get at a much higher price point. So it's that's where I really think you're getting a strong value here. Now, unlike the iPhone SE from Apple land, you do get pretty good hardware to match that, not just like the software. Cause I feel like with the SE, you're getting, you know, an older build with really great software, but here you're getting really great software and a pretty nice piece of hardware to match it. So it really does shine here. There's not much to talk about It's Android 12 with the material UI. You can see nice wallpapers and styles is really what was changed up quite a bit. They added a lot of, you know, security features as well. But Pixel has always been one of my favorite when it comes to privacy and security. A lot of people say they're a little bit intrusive with the advertisement, but you can always tweak that yourself. And so there's quite a bit of features in here throughout the settings menu. They have really good accessibility features as well on this phone. I really do like them. Also, there's a lot of nice gesture features. So if you go to gestures here, you have quick tap to start actions. You have quickly open camera with the double click with the camera for a selfie. You do have yourself system navigation where you could still go to that old school three button navigation if you want it. You also have tap to check phone. I use that quite a bit. Lift to check phone as well, which we showed earlier. Flip to shush. If you want somebody to like stop bu bugging you, you can just flip the phone to shush it. Also, you do have a one handed mode, which we talked about in this video as well. You can also change how you press and hold the power button. So a lot of smart touches here for the software. Overall, it's one of the cleanest, simple Android experiences out there, I would say. And um, they don't really have colorful looking icons here in here. But when you do change up the, you know, themes and stuff, it can change a little bit. Overall, it's a really nice layout. I think it's really simple and very clean. Lots of great software features there. In addition, you can also do yourself a split screen mode here on the Google Pixel if that you know mode supports or that app supports it. So that's pretty nice as well. They do have split screen on here. The widgets are kind of nice as well. I don't have the location turned on right at the moment, but overall a simple, clean Pixel software that a lot of people are going to enjoy. If they're not into those phones that have an overabundance of features, there's really no bloatware on here. It's just all Google stuff. So what is the performance like on this phone? Like how does it perform in the day to day? And I got to tell you, 
it's been very impressive. I felt like I was using the Pixel 6, to be quite honest with you, the full-blown one, the more premium version. The speed was on, on the level of any flagship phone I've tried. So definitely, you're definitely getting a really good value and performance here with that Google Tensor CPU on board. And the six gigs of RAM didn't really affect too much after a lot of apps were open, some things will reload, but it's really not a big deal. This phone has been a screamer in speed. So if you definitely care about performance, the Pixel 6a will not let you down whatsoever. You're gonna be quite impressed for the money you paid. I usually expect to get performance like this at the $800 price tag. So very strong in this area. There's not much more to say. And I do think that some people might worry a little bit about that fingerprint speed, but I found that once you kind of figure out how to use it to not be that bad, it does work pretty well. The screen protector I did put on did kind of lower its overall you know, responsiveness, but on the whole, it's been a very good fingerprint sensor. Some people saying that people can unlock it. I actually had people try that, unlock it, and it didn't unlock. So I don't know whose phones are doing that, but it wasn't my phone doing that to be quite honest with you. When it comes to the cameras, we are looking at two 12 megapixel cameras. One is a 12.2, the standard wide, and then a 12 megapixel ultra wide. Now, I feel like we've been talking about cameras for a while with Google Pixel being great. And do you really think it's gonna change here? Because it doesn't. Google uses their software algorithm to make really good photos. And it was no different here. The ultra wide is pretty solid as well very stable video in the day to day. In addition to that, you have the similar modes here. You have the night sight as well on this phone. So that's going to be fantastic on the camera. The front facing camera was also quite good as well. Wasn't too disappointed there. You can zoom in, zoom out. It didn't feel like it was as great as the pixel six pro, but it still felt flagship grade. Take a look at some samples and decide for yourself. I will tell you that you're going to be impressed for this price point. It's a very strong offering here. Even at the price tag, you would typically pay again $7,800 to get this type of quality. So the battery life in here is also very solid as well. Now this phone actually gets better as you use it with the adaptive settings turned on. The adaptive charging and battery works very well. And over time, you'll notice the Pixel just get even better battery life. So I will say that, you know, for this size, I was getting through a day easily. It was one of those phones where I didn't even think about the battery. I didn't even think if the battery was just gonna drain out on me. It was just a really strong performing battery and when I was just watching videos and browsing the web it just was sipping it very slowly so overall all day long battery life easily on this phone it charges at only 18 watts fast charging but honestly it charged pretty fast in my experience again I'm always going back to the price point for the price point it charged fast enough so I was pretty happy there as well so Google actually knocked it out of the park with the battery as well so very strong performer and battery life. That's one of the perks of getting a bigger phone instead of, you know, getting yourself a smaller compact size, you can stuff a larger cell inside here. So it really paid off. You're gonna enjoy this a lot if you care a lot about having an all day battery life phone. One area that wasn't all that was the audio. 
launch with Android 12. It's going to get the newer version later this year. It was loud, but it doesn't sound quite as deep, quite as full as the Pixel 6 Pro. So do keep that in mind, probably pretty soon actually. But definitely got some nice wallpapers and style. So yeah, you're going to be able to obviously hear people on speakerphone, but again, it's just not going to blow you away like a more premium phone would. So that's just an area that you sacrifice a little bit with a, with a phone price at this price point. So definitely not my favorite area of the audio, but also not a deal breaker either. Just wanted to mention it was just average. Some things that were surprising very quick was the internet speed, the Wi-Fi speed, the transfer speed with the US with the UFS 3.1 on here. And it also had really good reception with solid phone call quality. So just kind of connectivity in general was pretty great on this phone. That's a very good, and that's something that you definitely want to have in a smartphone. So overall, very good connectivity on this phone. In final conclusion, who is this phone for? Well, it's just for somebody who wants a Pixel phone at a value price point, who've always wanted that Pixel 6 Pro, but we're like, yeah, that's too high the price point. This phone is definitely for you. And I think it's one of the best value propositions out there. And this phone is really a great phone for the industry because I think it pushes forward, you know, this kind of segment and it's going to make other manufacturers also get a little bit better. Why? Because I think this hits a better value point than the Galaxy A53 and the iPhone SE. Reason why SE doesn't really give you the best hardware for the money. A53 doesn't give you the best performance. This strikes a better balance between both of those things, great hardware and great performance. Overall, it's probably one of the best in this segment, if not the best in that competition. But we'll do more of a detailed comparison between those other phones if you like to see that. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know if you're picking up a Pixel 6a or if you already did so. Share your experience with the community down below. Nick here. I will catch you all in the next one. And peace.